The most trusted survey-based technique for product optimization and pricing is called conjoint analysis. In a conjoint analysis exercise, we show a survey respondent a few choices to select from. Typically, we ask a respondent to review three products or services and then select the one that they like. After the selection, we show a new set of products and the respondent again is asked to select the one they like out of this set. When respondents carefully consider the products before making the selection, the researcher can be confident that the data is good quality. But how do we know that we can trust the data? What if respondents just click through the choice exercise quickly and randomly to finish the survey? If they were to do that, the data would be garbage and you, as a researcher, and your client would have wasted a lot of money for poor quality data. Luckily, there are a couple of ways to check the quality of your data. Of course, one good method is to check the completion time for the choice task. Most survey providers record the minutes it took for a respondent to go through the choice exercises. A good rule of thumb is to find the median time across respondents and investigate those whose time was less than 40% of the median. Another good way employs something called the root likelihood or RLH score. The RLH serves a similar role that R square does in regression. Technically, it tells you for each survey respondent the probability the respondent would have made the selection she made given her preference or utility score. The RLH method works like this. Let's suppose that we show three choices in a choice task. If we know nothing about the preferences, we might say that each of the three choices has a 1 in 3 or a 33% chance of being selected. The rate we get from random chance. Because respondents do have preferences and we learn about these preferences along the way, we calculate utility scores for each respondent. Using the respondent's utilities and what's called the logit equation, we can easily calculate the probability that the respondent would have picked each of the three options. As an example, let's assume that option A has an 80% probability of being selected, option B has 15%, and option 3 has 5%. If the respondent did pick option 8, their root likelihood would have been 0.8, much different from the 33% chance probability. It gets a little more complex because each respondent goes through many choice tasks, each with different options and different probabilities to be selected. But at the end of the several choice tasks, we calculate the geometric mean of the probabilities, which we call the respondent's RLH score. With that technical background on root likelihood behind us, we can use it to recognize respondents who randomly or near randomly click through a choice exercise. First, run the choice exercise with random respondents. Sawtooth Software's Lighthouse Studio allows you to do it with only a few clicks. All it takes is a few minutes and you've generated a data set with random respondents. Think about them as bots who have no preference for any options. Once you've generated the random data set, Step two, run the conjoint analysis and make sure that you use HB methodology so we'll have utility estimates for each bot respondent. Then look at the RLH scores for the random respondents. Now remember these were randomly generated bots and we still calculated RLH scores for each. The score or the scores should be very close to the chance probability but there may be some random variation as some bots may have gotten lucky. In fact, because of the random variation for the RLH scores for the random respondents, I usually find the 80th percentile RLH score for the random bots and call that score the cutoff score. I say I will cut every real respondent whose RLH score is lower than this number. What that means is if a real respondent scores lower than 20% of random bots, I consider their choices pretty random, not carefully considered. That respondent should probably be cut from the data. So of course I review the RLH scores for the real data and flag every respondent whose RLH score is lower than the, this threshold. So again, in short, complete your survey and conjoint task on random respondents, then run the HB conjoint analysis 
When done, look at the RL8 scores for the 80th percentile score. Make this score the cutoff score for your real respondents and flag everyone who is lower than this cutoff. An important note is that your conjoined data set should have enough questions to be able to distinguish between good and random respondents. If each level of each attribute appears at least six times across conjoined questions for each respondent, you are in good shape for this approach. If each level appears three or fewer times, then you probably should not use this approach and it will be very difficult to tell between real and random respondents using the RLH score. There, now you have a handy way to ensure that you have purged your conjoint analysis of poor quality random respondents. You don't want to skip this step. This step is quite important as you'd be surprised how often respondents quickly click through a choice exercise. Without cleaning your data, important outcomes such as willingness to pay for enhanced features will be incorrect and exaggerated. You will also overestimate preference for low quality products. This example here shows a data set in which approximately 150 of the respondents made selections that were indistinguishable from random choices. If you think it won't happen to you, it most likely will. In fact, it almost certainly has happened to you. So be alert and use the root likelihood score to catch them.